Hi. In the previous uh, videos, we talked about propositions, connectives, and how to define them using truth tables. We also uh, derived some equivalences of propositions using these tru truth tables, which we call laws of propositional logic. And we also went on to derive um, some equivalences of compound propositions using laws of propositional logic as something basic, right? So in this video, let's switch gears and talk about arguments and their validity. Okay, so these are arguments in the sense of propositional logic. So let me uh, define what an argument is precisely. So definition. An argument is just a sequence of propositions um, which we call premises, P1 to Pn which we call called premises along with the conclusion. So this is another proposition along with the proposition Q called conclusion. So there is only one conclusion and there could be several premises. So symbolically we write this as follows. P1 to Pn in a vertical way, and therefore Q. So this P1 to Pn are premises, and this Q is a conclusion. Okay, so um, not every uh, argument is valid. So we define what it means for an argument to be valid. So we say that. Uh, such an argument. is valid if P1 and so on up to Pn implies Q is a tautology. Okay, so what this means is that when a, no matter what values you put, what, what truth values you put in P1 to Pn and Q, this should always be true. Okay, that's what tautology means, right, for a compound proposition. So we define a, a tautology as a compound proposition which is tr true no matter what the truth values of the um, variables are. So let's give an example of this. So the simplest example we can th think of is P, therefore P. So the premise is P and the conclusion is also P, right? So for this to be valid, we need P implies P to be true. Let's put a question mark. Is this always true? Well, uh, it certainly looks like it's obvious. So let's uh, actually formally derive this. So P implies P is equivalent to negation P or P using the conditional identity. So therefore, and, and we know that negation P or P is always true. right? So using laws of propositional logic again, we are able to prove that this is in fact a tautology. Okay. So let's get another example. Um, I would say P and Q, therefore P. In a similar way, we can say P and Q, therefore Q. So for this uh, to be a valid argument, we need P and Q implies P to be a tautology. So let's see again using conditional identi identity that it, this is in fact a tautology. So this is equivalent to negation P and Q or P using conditional identity and this is equivalent to negation p or negation q or p so that's equivalent to uh, by associate associativity we can rearrange this to get negation p or p or negation q um, so this here i used de morgan's laws here i used associativity right and here i used conditional identity so let's let's just record them so that it's more organized and this is equivalent to true or negation q right by domination law this is equivalent to true because no matter what the value of negation q is true or negation q should be true so therefore in fact this is a tautology so hence this argument is valid right mm -hmm. so was this one so let, let's look at some other examples. So by now, I think you can guess what could be, right? Some other examples. 
let's say p therefore p or q so p implies p or q should be a tautology for this to be valid right so again let's use uh, conditional identity negation p or p or q this is equal to negation p or p or q so here i used conditional identity and here i used associativity and here i used true or q right and then so because negation p or p is always true uh, i forget the name of the identity there but that's all right and this true or q is always true by the domination law Uh, the arguments we were dealing with actually in fact has some names just like laws of propositional logic we have some basic arguments from which we can build more complicated arguments so um, this is called uh, simplification the simplification is two things p and q therefore p but also p and q therefore q so there are two two separate arguments so both are called simplification um, I'm just going to write one of them, and then you have this, which you call which you call addition. This is called addition because you know you're adding a new proposition Q, right? So note here that it doesn't matter what the truth value of Q is. What Q is, it's just a proposition. So you can throw in a new proposition Q in this argument when you're writing P, therefore P or Q. Okay, so um, that's addition. So there are uh, some other special arguments. So this is P implies Q, P, therefore Q. Okay, let's see the validity of this. So for this to be valid, we need P implies Q and P. All of this implies Q is a tautology. So let's question that. So let's see if we can simplify it to get a tautology. So remember that, so now I'm, I'm using all laws of propositional logic to derive these tautologies, to prove that these are tautologies. But you can also use truth tables to show the same. So you can also, for example, write the truth table for this entire proposition and prove that all the uh, entries of its column are just true. Okay, that's one way to show it's a tautology. So, um, but let me just use laws of propositional logic for, for now. Uh, let me simplify. So, P implies Q and P is, is equal to what? So, negation P or Q and P. So, I just used conditional identity here. And then this is equal to negation P and p or q and p this i just used uh, distributive law right i can distribute um, p over r because there's an and here so negation p and p is false so we have this to be equivalent to false or q and p and now by commutativity you can you can say that it is q and p or false um, so i'm just I'm just going to keep it like this for false or Q and P and say that this is equal to Q and P by the identity loss. So let me record all this. So the first one I used is conditional identity. The next one is distributive law. The next one is, um, I actually don't remember the name of this. Negation P and P is false, uh, but that's okay. And then false or Q and P uh, is equal to Q and P. This is uh, identity law. Okay, so we got this part as Q and P. So the entire uh, uh, proposition turns out to be Q and P implies P. But we already proved that Q and P implies P is a tautology, right? We did this here. Well, I did P and Q implies P, but P and Q is same as Q and P. So we in fact already did this, that this is a tautology. So therefore this is a tautology. Okay. And this argument is called 
modus pune so let me rewrite that so modus pune is p implies q p therefore q okay so let let's uh, deal with another standard um, argument so the which go, goes along similar lines which is related to implies so that is p implies q negation q therefore negation p okay let's see the validity of this one now so we need to prove that p implies q and negation q implies negation p is a tautology so let me simplify this so this is equal into negation p or q and negation q implies negation p okay because by conditional identity conditional identity and then this is equal into negation p and negation q or q and negation q by distributivity so this is distributivity i'm just using short and there and this is equal into negation p and negation q or this q and negation q is false right and this implies negation p but false or any proposition is just that proposition by the identity loss so this is um, negation p and negation q implies negation p so here we used identity loss and now what shall we do to this oh we can use conditional identity again so this is equal into negation of um, negation p and negation q or negation p i used conditional identity there so that's equal into p so okay i'll write the full step negation negation p or negation negation q or negation p i used de morgan loss and that's equal into p or q or negation p that's a uh, double negation so i'm writing each and every step here um, so th that's why it might look a bit long winded so this is equivalent to p or negation p or q so this is a combination of uh, commutativity and associativity so i'll write it as a single step and this is equivalent to true or q which is equivalent to true by the domination law okay so in fact we proved that this is a um, this is a tautology so it might look long winded and complicated but i'm just following my nose and doing what what's obvious to do um another way to do this as i said before is to write a truth table for this guy here this compound proposition and if you get all uh, the w entries in uh, in the column to be true then obviously this is a tautology by definition okay okay so this is called this valid argument is called modus tollen so a small comment about uh, the previous two arguments uh, we derived so this modus ponen is saying that you have p implies q so that means if p is true then q is true and we have p so we just have the statement that p is true so if we know that p is true then we can conclude that q is true therefore when we know p implies q is true and p to be true then we can conclude q okay this is just a um uh, you know i have a conditional by a hypothesis p and a conclusion q and if i am given that the hypothesis is true then i can say that the conclusion of this is actually true right so the conclusion of this is q so therefore q is true so that's the intuitive way to think about this as you might have already guessed it's a pretty easy thing to interpret and then here it's you have p implies q but you have not q so you are contradicting q so therefore not p so this ties in with the fact of contrapositive right because we know that 
So let me let me derive mod stolen from mod exponent using contrapositive. So in the video on uh, contrapositive, I derived that p implies q is sorry p implies q is equivalent to negation q implies negation p, right? A conditional is equivalent to its contrapositive. So using this, what I can do is so if I have p implies q negation q therefore negation p I can um, I can replace p implies q with negation q implies negation p so this the validity of this is equivalent to the validity of what I'm going to write that is negation q implies negation p negation q therefore negation p so I just replaced the first statement with this okay and now now I just apply mod exponent right mod exponent says the first statement implies a, another statement and given the first statement then the second statement is true so this equivalence along with mod exponent actually gives mod stolen so that's a nice insight to have right